Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, according to your time zone. God bless you. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogbo Yega. You are welcome to today's family devotional number 136. Family devotional number 136. Uh, you know that in this program we endeavor to study the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and cover the entire Bible in one year. It's always so loaded with you know, a lot of messages that the Lord is sending to you and I directly. So please, if you have just joined us, kindly endeavor to uh, go through the previous messages and why you follow us as we advance. As soon as we are able to get to 365 or 366 days, we've already entirely covered the Bible. So there is nothing that will be strange to you from the Bible. God bless you. Today I'm going to talk on the past, on the topic, uh, welcome or journey with me to the world of wisdom. Journey with me to the world of wisdom. And uh, the Bible passages we are going to read are, we are going to study are Proverbs 12, 8 to 17. Proverbs 12, 8 to 17. John 9. John chapter 9. Verse 1 to 34. Verse 1 to 34. Root 1. Root 1. 1 to 2. Verse 1. 1 to chapter 2, verse 23. God bless you. Um, we will take the first passage. We will explain the rest because of your time. Shall we? A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a rough mind is despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no suit. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. The wicked desire the stronghold of evil doers. But the root of the righteous endures. Evil doers are trapped by their sinful thoughts, and so the innocent escape trouble. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. Thank God for that message, or for that passage. Um, as I titled it, it's a journey to the world of wisdom. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise it. In other words, anybody that does not fear the Lord is a fool. Um, there are a lot of things going on in Christianity now. In fact, with religion generally, but Christianity in particular. You remember that, you know, these days now there are a lot of movements because of uh, you don't blame those who are trying to make the moves, but at the same time, we have to recognize or blame the fact that our religious leaders have overdone things such that people were, became angry and they were querying the authority of the leadership of the church because um, our leaders were insensitive to uh, 
what Christianity is all about. Christianity is all about Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, which says, You shall love your God with the whole of your heart, and you love your neighbor as yourself. That is the central message or the central theme of the entire Bible that covers both the Old and the New Testament preachings and teachings. But today we discover, just like it was of the old times, that, you know, um, at a point our religious leaders developed so many man-made doctrines that it jettisoned the central theme of the Bible. I'll give the example. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the Lord, the priests of old, they were so particular about the law, the laws, that they also were so much in observance of it that they forgot about love. And I'll give you that example again. Someone will be sick on a Sabbath and they wouldn't want that person to be attended to because he because it was a Sabbath day, because it was a, a resting day that the law says so. But Christ debunked this by healing on a, a Sabbath and it became a controversy instead of them understanding that love you know, covers the multitudes of sins and then love supersedes everything. And when there is need to do something, the timing does not matter. You've got to do it. If it becomes imperative to do it, you've got to do it. They didn't understand. They took Christ on a journey onto controversy and they started framing so many things against him. Interestingly, it happened in one of the passages that we are going to look at this morning. Then you will see that when man made doctrines took over the position of love, the essence of religion, especially Christianity, is defeated. When you can be going to church, fasting, praying, you know, speaking in tongue and attending programs upon programs, and you cannot do simple things as to extend <clears throat> love to your nearest neighbor, our essence of being in Christ is totally defeated. So wisdom demands that we are able to recognize what needed to be done at a particular at any particular time, whatever that time is for, or whatever period is it, it is that that needed to be done, it should be done, irrespective of what laws are made or set aside for that period, like the Sabbath thing we talked about. For instance, again, now you will see that today, many parents would rather pay, give their uh, children's school fees as tithes. Their parents' uh, feeding allowance, they would rather give it as tithes. Some would rather, rather than work, to make money, they would rather pay the little they have to say they want to buy prosperity from the church of God. And some will rather focus on miracles that has to do with material things or even healings. You know, they will focus on that rather than the salvation of their souls. After your miracle, what next? Many of those who received the miracles, what did they do? They went away. They never looked back to even acknowledge, talk less of you know, uh, considering making heaven or knowing more about Christ. Only few out of those ten that Christ healed, only one came. Then Christ as well, the remaining nine. And <clears throat> uh, just like also like the woman by the well, you remember, after he was, uh, she was kind of healed and then she started evangelizing. These are the people that follow the way of salvation rather than just the healings or deliverances that they got. And the wise thing is for you to now know more about that God that delivers you, instead of you just running away 
with the, temp the healing which is temporary. That's why many of those who receive Christ's healings, they never got a permanent uh, solution to their problems. But those who came back, they had the full dose and they have full cure for their diseases. Now, like the examples that were given here this morning, you see, Bible says that it's only the prudent that is praised. You see, a fool is laughed at. But a prudent person, let me give this in terms of somebody who manages his life well and who is able to come back to the society and bless the people. They are the who that will be praised. You know, rather those who enjoy their lives, so-called enjoyment early in life, and they have nothing to show for the life when they are old and they will suffer. People will laugh at them. Then the next one, after prudence, there is... Uh, Try to be nobody. <laughs> a fool, you know, raises himself above what he is. It is better that you are humble. Make yourself low than to be boasting. You know, there is this saying that it is the empty drum that makes greater noise. They will not become empty drums in Yehoshua's name. It is better to be humble in whatever position you are, if you are particularly blessed, than to be a noise maker. And it is the poor that makes the greatest noise. You see, in the next one. Righteous care for animals. Like, look, the Bible even talks about the righteous caring even for their animals. A person who cares for animals, what will he do to a human being? A fellow human being. He would have followed the book of uh, Matthew 22, 37 to 39. He would have loved God and then loved his neighbor to the point that he's even caring for the animal. Do you know that the animal is also your neighbor? What the dogs are doing in the house, security men cannot do it. Dogs don't sleep per se at night. They keep watch over you and then you are sleeping. But employ a security person today you will discover that um, the way to, to scam you is what they will be looking for. You know, you know, a good person will take good care even of his pets. All right, that's wisdom. Yes, the next one. Work with your hands. Now, thank God now. Bible, this is the Bible, uh, Proverbs 12, saying you should work with your hands. If you walk the land, you will have so much to eat. What is the wisdom now in what we are doing today? Monday to Sunday, you are in one program or the other. December is coming now. You are preparing for Congress. You are preparing for all those things. And your work is suffering. What are you supposed to do? If you work with your hand, what are you, what are you looking for in the Congress and in the programs? You are looking for uh, miracles. You are looking for healings you are looking for blessings <laughs> and when you get there they will tell you a lot oh my father tells me that before you get home miracle would have happened miracle would have happened somebody who had property somebody who did this somebody look if you want to get those things it is clear here walk your land and you will have surplus to eat you have so much to eat and you can bless others it's not going to stay in the various programs that will automatically end you. The, yes, we need prayers for everything we are laboring over to be fruitful so that we don't labor in vain. It is prayer that can do that. But not that you put yourself in a position where you think that is when you go there, you pray, and then just magically, which we call miracle this time, uh, then it will happen. No, you still have to go back to your work, take your work seriously. Is the wise knows that he has to work to get blessed. If, uh, Deuteronomy 28 tells us that 10 to 40, if you want to be the head, if you want to be uh, to be financially buoyant, that you have no need to borrow. If you want to have everything, God will provide the enabling environment for you, but you must work the land for you to be able to get those things. The wise knows that there's no room for laziness. The, the foolish is lazy. The wise is hard work. Yes, ma'am. Next. Fantasies. 
fools chase after fantasies. Fools, they chase after fantasies. You know, hey, it's happening there. Oh, it's this, that, it is there. That's why easily many has calmed on the online. That's why when the MMM of this world and all the various schemes of this world came there, that's why everyone ran after it. Nobody wants to work again. Everybody's making money. Everybody is tempted to. Those who are working and have seen that it takes so much time for the labor to come to fruition, or they see that they are investing, they are failing, and many things are happening, people quickly get tempted. A lot of us got tempted into Ponzi scheme then until it was killed. And let me tell you, the amount of money that was lost was over 112 billion naira. CBN seized that money to teach the people a lesson. Though it's a wicked lesson, honestly speaking, I believe that that money should have been returned to the owners. Now, they lost that money to government. Government itself, like what Yoruba will say, Olegbe, Olegba, you see? Those of us who went there doing that one, we wanted cheap money. Then the government gathered the money from us and collected it and never returned to everybody. You see that Olegbe, Olegba, the, the thief uh, stole and another thief stole from the thief. You see, that's exactly what happened. So may God forgive us because of the fact that we are after fantasies. You know, you pay money today, in two days' time, they give you double the money. You know, it's unfortunate that what is happening in the country, world, the countries worldwide, made people to get tempted because if people are laboring and getting results, a lot of people won't run into it. Lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from all evils. A lot of people fell into that, and it's unfortunate. May God help us in Yahushua's name. So, a journey into the world of wisdom is where we are today. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Like as the arguments are going on now, uh, religions generally are being queried, whereas the presence of religion has its own influence on the behavior of the people. I just now wonder what will happen if we jettison religion, especially Christianity. Wisdom demands that we should still identify with our God, no matter how wicked our leadership seems to be or manifests, no matter the kind of uh, dangerous fruits that they manifest that, that annoyed us, that made us to query religion. We now know that without God, we can do nothing. So please, uh, let us be wise. A lot of movements are going on. Make sure that no matter what you feel about what um, our leaders are doing, make sure you do not abandon your God because the <laughs> Bible says that the, to the wicked, they, think, they, they feel that they are right. But uh, at the end of the day, they, by the time they realize that they are wrong, it may be too late. Do not ever forsake your God. God is not ready. To, you see, your leaders may disappoint you. That's why the Bible says, don't look onto your leaders. The mistake we made is that many of us, we have taken our G.O.s to be our God. And that's where we missed it. We left God. We made our G.O.s God. And nobody can share the glory of God with him. That is why even the religious leaders themselves today are being ridiculed. God is exposing them. And it is for you to understand, but be wise never to forget, forsake, or uh, run away from your creator. You are still alive. It's still time now that you can do that. Yes. Please go to the next one. The wicked versus righteous. Of course, the wicked, it is foolishness to be wicked. And it is wisdom, all right, to be wise. It is wisdom to do good, not to be wicked. But a lot, like I gave the example, Christ says the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that um, the Son of Man has come to give life, to give life more abundantly. Who will you belong to? As we speak, a lot of people belong to the devil. They prefer to go to the thief instead, to smart things out, instead of doing what God wants them to do so that they can enjoy the abundance of God's blessing. 
in Deuteronomy 20, say, I will send the rains at the right at this. I will give you the enabling environment. You pray to me, I will answer you. Make everything favorable for you, for your businesses to succeed. Oh, but you say you want to go for Ponzi scheme, it's left for you. Wisdom demands that you follow God. And it is there you have profit. Yes, ma'am. Evil doers trapped. Evil dra doers are trapped. Look, uh, it's unfortunate. The CBN, ex CBN governor, now that we know, I don't need to mention names again. Stop tapping. So, the CBN governor that messed up today has been trapped by the what he did. Anytime you do evil, you are trapped. Maybe you don't know. It's just that it may not have manifested immediately. Look at a young boy and a young girl, or even a young boy and a young girl that are committing fornication. You understand? Some of them will get pregnant. They are trapped by that pregnancy. And they begin to look for ways out. If they didn't do it in the first place, there will be no need committing abortion. One problem leads to another. You know, we can see now that everything we do has repercussion, traps us. If it is evil, you don't want to marry a girl, you impregnate her. You're already a married man. So, and you say you don't like her. At the end of the day, you destroy her life and you move ahead with last wickedness. You think you are right, but what you did has trapped you. I remember a gentleman got married sometime, then he has problem having uh, a fruit of the womb. He took the grace of God and a prophet or something that discovered his past, the husband's past, and said there was a girl that has caused him, you know, because he jettisoned her. And not until he went back, he was trapped by his deed, not until he went back to go and locate that girl and begged, and she's the forgiving type. He never got the fruit of the womb. But immediately after she begged, uh, he begged, what if she, that girl had died? The, the girl cursed her. So at the end of the day, uh, he was trapped by his deed. Yes, next. Fruit of leaves. The fruit of our leaves can trap us and can bring blessings to us. The fruit of our, that is what we say with our mouths can bring God's blessings or, or curses. So why not say what is good so that you will reap what is good? All right? The book of Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, you know, I lay before you life and death and blessings and curses. So you are to choose. Say, but I plead with you, choose life. I plead with you today, choose God. Like I said, there is temptation in town now for everybody to run away from God because on the flimsy excuses that our pastors, our Jews messed up, hey, it, is, it does not avail you. It will not avail you in the end. Though. Because even if it is the message of the word of God that you are hearing, you read the Bible and God is teaching you himself there. That's enough. Man can make mistakes. Our Jews are not angels. The mistake we made is that we think they are angels and we make them gods. So, it is still our error. So, if we are bitter, we are only bitter at ourselves. We are fools for making them our god. So, the bitterness in our heart now is created by our own belief system. So, we need to know God. If you know God, no G.O. can mislead you. When the G.O. preaches what is not in the Bible or what is not scriptural, you reject it and you go by what God says. So it is the word of God that will mirror the past, the uh, geo's teaching, not the geo's teaching mirroring. Uh, I mean, the other way around. No, it is the word of God that will mirror, and you see where the truth is, and you follow. Say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. Yes, ma. Walk and begin. Please go to the other points. Be wise. The reason for our trouble may not be for our sins. Okay, now Christ went about doing his work, preaching the kingdom of God and healing people. You see, God 
Christ was doing both. He did not perform miracles at the detriment of mercy, the message of the kingdom. He did not press for the message of God, neglecting to heal the people. You understand? That is why, you see, when we are sharing testimony in the church of God, it's a good thing if the testimonies are real and are true. Because a lot of testimonies have become stage managed because the pastors want to attract people to themselves, not even to God. Testimonies are good if they are real, but how do you find the real testimonies today? Unless it happens to you, may you experience good miracles that will lead to your good testimonies that will benefit uh, others in Yehoshua's name. But if you don't know God and you don't even you are not even doing the will of God, well, how will you have uh, attract such miracles? So Christ now look at uh, the wisdom of man. You know, we are talking of wisdom this morning. The wisdom of man suggests that anyone that is born crippled, lame, or what that, their parents must have done evil. Christ made it clear here that it is not the sins either of the parents or of the child. Because many a thing that happens to us today we would conclude that it is because of the man's sin. Your work, you lose your work. You think it is because of the sin you committed. It does happen sometimes because if you committed sin, you will know. But if you didn't commit and you look around there, you can't even fathom out what you did wrong. Then it may not be because of your sin. When this person that was born lame was like, you know, Christ saw him and then we were asking. You see, instead of praying, asking for solution, people are looking what, what would have been the cause. Yes, it's good to ask questions, but um, Christ proved it wrong here that it's not all the time that it is so you know next walk while you are able otherwise your own day wisdom you demands that you walk with your hands while you are still able time is coming after 60 you will not be agile enough to run around to do any work to gather money to make money while you are still able please walk oh that is wisdom your old age, like I always say, will not forgive you. Another thing you should remember, the fact that you are a born-again Christian does not mean you won't suffer at your old age if you don't work with your hands when you are able. All right? It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, remember the ten virgins. I always say it. If the, one, the wise one came with extra oil, believing that anything could happen, and instantly it happened, and the same thing, your old age. <laughs> Make sure you you come with extra oil. Or you do not sacrifice. That's an extra oil. That's what it means. The preparations you are making for your old, old age is an extra oil. The, you're going to the word of God, you know, going to programs, praying and helping the work of God even while you're agile. It's okay. Very okay. But the, the hold that extra oil so that when you are old you won't suffer otherwise you will suffer yes christ is the light of the world christ says when i'm in the world i'm the light of the world i will do those things that will make you to see that i'm the light of that's why he was healing and he was teaching and preaching he was guiding everybody anybody that has problems he will solve the problem yes right Methodology for healing. Yes, Christ's methodology for healing. This time around, when he wanted to heal this man, what did he do? He spat on the floor, on the ground, and mixed it with the mud, and then used it to uh, rub his uh, eyes. And he said, go to the river of Siloam or something to go and bathe. And he went. In some places, he would just decree, rise, Lazarus, rise, or so many things. Sometimes, he would just say, Take your bed and, and go away. God uses different methods. So, and what is important is that God, Christ heals, yes? The reaction of the Pharisees was so uh, oh, This is the where the issue is. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, the teachers of the law, they believe they have custody 
of the knowledge of the word of God, that whatever they do or say is the final thing. But unfortunately for them, in fact, they thought they knew so much while they knew nothing. They were fools. Then they thought they were wise. I had a piece yesterday that says uh, the most dangerous thing is when a fool does not know that he's a fool and a fool is teaching even the wise, thinking that he knows. It's so terrible. Unfortunately, our Pharisees, Sadducees in those days, just as we have today, our GOs today, what happened then of old is what is repeating itself now. We thought, we thought we knew, but we knew nothing. That's why we need to be careful. The message of Christ is simple. Love your God with the whole of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. We, we, we pretend to love God by staging program, by preaching, by teaching, by doing everything. But we are not practicing what we are teaching. Wisdom shows, says that we must practice what we preach and teach. We are not practicing it. People are suffering in the church. We are not addressing their needs at all in any way. But we think we are smart. We are collecting from them. Whereas, Bible makes it abundantly clear. The church should create an egalitarian society. How many of our churches created such today? So, that is what. So, they think they knew, but unfortunately, they've left a virtue, which is in Luke eleven forty two and uh, Matthew twenty three twenty three, that justice, 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 justice. Christ did justice to this guy when he came to him for healing, and he healed him. He had mercy on him, he sympathized with him, and delivered him. But our churches today, what do we do? Even individually, as in the family, it is getting well with you. Don't remember anybody. Children don't remember their parents, and they are paying tithes in the church, and. Parents, uh, parents don't invest upon their children and they want to reap from where they didn't sow. It doesn't work out that way. Spirituality is not stupidity. Please go ahead. The reaction of the Pharisees was to praise you. Now, the reaction of the Pharisees, instead of praising Christ for healing, instead of congratulating the person that was healed, not only was Christ himself taken to task, even the person that was healed was taken to task. And not only that, the parents of the person that was healed, you see, in the process, they want to verify. Eh? They were telling Christ that, you know, you healed on the Sabbath. Don't you know that you are not supposed to do that today? All right? They were telling the guy that, ah, you, who do you say heals you? Say, all I know is that this man healed me. I don't want to know about his name. don't want to know much about that. You are taking me to task. He said, eh, you are trying to give testimony that this man is of God. Because he actually said that if he didn't come from God, he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have had such power. But they queried him. And then they went to the parents and said, Did you, is he not your child that was sick? He said, you know him now. He's of age. Let him tell you. And they came back to the man. The man said, well, I don't want to hear about all these stories. All I know is that once I was blind, now I can see. Please, brethren. That's what I'm saying about the movements that are going on now. Be careful. Me, I'm a byproduct. I'm an evidence of God's love. I wouldn't have amounted to anything but for God. I always say it. If I can sleep and dream, and dreams come to me in my sleep, and, I, and the thing that was read to me in a dream comes to pass, then there is God. There is God. So if you want to follow uh, the liberators and say, okay, what you see, what you need to liberate from is liberate yourself from the foolishness that our religious leaders are selling to us, the GOs. Fake miracles, fake testimonies, fake this and that. Read the Bible yourself. Test, I mean, check what they are saying against the word of God. Drop their word if it is against to, against the word of God. For instance, Titan, not like we are saying the same thing. First fruit, things out loud by Hebrews 7, verse 5, and so on. And then if they are still selling to you 
the Old Testament pressures. I'm not talking of the principles like Deuteronomy 10, 28, uh, 10 to 14. Because you have to work and Bible and make it emphatically. And even in the New Testament, say, ask, seek, knock. You just have to work. If you don't want to work and you want to eat, you will suffer. So, if they are still selling to you the rituals, bringing chicken, bringing fowl, bringing turkey, bringing everything, especially Christmas period this year now, they will need those things. And they say, go and bring it so that your problem will be solved. Or you still have to go. Well, if you follow them, it is your own making. But free yourself from those ones. Know God for yourself. And they don't forsake the assembly of the people still, the saints. All you do is use the word of God to mirror whatever they are saying. So, uh, the way it is now, they are querying Christ. If they can query Christ, how much more you and I, you should query whatever your GOs are, and are doing or saying. You need the word of God to do it. Please go ahead. Division in the church today mm -hmm. is about Christ, not Antichrist. Now you can now see that in those days we are hearing Antichrist, Antichrist. The division in the church today is not about even Antichrist from anywhere, but from the church of God. Our GOs themselves, the manifestation of the fruit of their labors, amounted to Antichrist. That is the truth. Because Christ will not do all these things that they are doing. They will, Christ will not fake many miracles. Christ will not demand for money for doing miracles. Christ will not tell you to pay tight. He never collected. He never asked his people to collect. And even say it is of less importance. And he focus on what is important. The salvation of our souls. Next. The man's parents said, Oh, the man's parents said, when they, were, they wanted to find a way to even nail the parents, the, the parents referred them by wisdom. They, because as at that time, if they had testified that, that this, so we need to apply wisdom. Don't foolishly go and provoke trouble, and then when the trouble falls upon your head, you say you are bold. Don't be like the one that calls himself Daniel in the battle, that went into the lion's uh, camp there. Eh, he wanted to prove what happened in the of, of old. And it was consumed. Let your foolishness not consume you. Be careful. Yes. We must rest from the second time. Yeah. The difference between Moses and Christ is in the belief. Mm -hmm. the you of... see, the people themselves, that is the Pharisees, as they will have Abraham, we have Moses. Moses had directly from God. They never recognized Christ, who is right with them. Who is superior to Moses? They were still comparing uh, apple with oranges. They issue. They are comparing Moses with Christ. Christ came and he even nullified the era of Moses entirely. With the New Testament, the New Covenant, Hebrews seven twenty two. The New Testament that he showed, it, he made clear there that look. The order of Moses was fleshy and was faulty. I have come to replace it, replace it, and is poor by his own name. And he came to correct things, and they are comparing Moses with him. Who is Moses before Christ? Moses was just a foreshadow of Christ. He was the Christ of that period. But when the real Christ came, what happened? He has to give way. John the Baptist says, I am so low that I cannot untie the, uh, the, 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 the rope of his uh, sandals. And he, he, he bowed down. So that is it. Yes. The pride of Pharisees is that they said they know the word. And they said they know Moses very well, that Moses, God spoke to Moses, whereas Christ hears directly from God. Eh? Yes. Farmer made a limit to travel. Now going to the very interesting story of Ruth. Of course, there are a lot of um, lessons to learn from there. For instance, Nicky Gomdor, whose model I'm using, uh, model work I'm using, said that um, 
he looked at this story of the whole thing that we are talking about from um, from the story angle, that is good report angle, even from what where I started, the reports that people had. He, he looked at it from that perspective that look, if your report is good, you can get anywhere in the world. And the same thing is what we are doing about Ruth now. Ruth's report is so good that you know she lost and she regained all that she lost because she behaved. She took the risk. She loved. Her nearest neighbor was her mother-in-law now, whose two sons have died. And she said, irrespective of that, she will cling to her. But today, people are making mockery of that. Everybody will sow what he reaps. Ruth has sown is her own, and she has reaped bountifully. More than prosperity, even. Everything she lost, she was able to recover because she behaved according to the will of God. Love your neighbor. She didn't look at the husband alone as the only person to love. But when the mother-in-law was in trouble, she stood by her, and God rewarded her for good. How many of you will build the car? How many of you will try to show this kind of love? God says, love your wife as Christ loved the church that he gave his only, he gave uh, his life for it. How many men can really defend or take good care of their, their wives in these days when people don't even want to marry? Yes. Hello? No, it's there still more. Farmer made a minute to travel. He died at the two sons. Uh -huh. Now my decided to return home. Now how my after and the son the daughter in law to return to their kids. Uh -huh. After the, the refused. After the death of the children of Naoma, she returned to her place and Ruth came back with her. They've had a report of Ruth. May you have good reports, Neoshua's me. I have good reports, Neoshua's me. What Ruth did was what paid her in the end. Boaz has heard how she took care of her mother-in-law and he decided to reward her. May God reward us, reward us for our good deeds. May he forgive us for all that we did wrong in Yahushua's name. But what is the message here? The wise ones will endeavor to begin to do what is right what is just to do justice to fellow human beings Ruth did justice to her mother-in-law and she got the reward everything we do just as the evil deeds of the wicked will trap him or her so will the good works of the righteous bring rewards good rewards to him or her i don't know what you are doing today there are people around you you can help you didn't help Huh? You will get the reward though. The Lord will help us in Yehoshua's name. Let us learn. The issue of um, um, Ruth is more than marriage. It's about having good reports, whether in your marriage, whether in a place of work. Did the Bible not even talk about widows having good reports because before the church can support them and that they should be up to 60 years and above? And the good report they will have is something they have been doing consistently in the past, not when their husbands died. Now, because they needed, uh, they now resigned to the church, thinking that the church will be feeding them. No. Don't let us get it wrong. Let us do what we needed to do now to get we should, what we should get. So let us flow in this world of wisdom. Labor with your hand if you want to eat. If you want your tomorrow to be peaceful with you, make sure you provide for that tomorrow by investing in your children, investing in businesses, investing in other people, investing in anything you can invest upon. Not necessarily because you are looking for money. The money will come. God knows how to make it. Do you know you can invest in your children and your children wouldn't even take care of you? And God will raise somebody from nowhere to do what your own children cannot do or can do or they don't want to do just what is important is invest on your children invest on people you don't know 
God knows how to resolve the issue of your life. But don't be so foolish as not to do anything about your future and you say the future will take care of itself. Old age does not forgive. Always remember that. And don't be a foolish Christian if you are a Christian. Thinking that you are serving God that you don't provide for yourself. I think this is okay for today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we appreciate you. Who would have once again, who would have taught us this kind of thing? And these messages are there, yet men are going around, not even looking at it, talk less of listening to it or less, less of doing it. No wonder we are this much suffering. Father, please forgive us in Yehoshua's name. From today, I pray for my brethren who are under the sound of my voice that today they will tow the path of wisdom. I too will tow the path of wisdom. I will continue to explore the world of wisdom. And at the end of the day, Heavenly Father, this wisdom will earn us good success in this world and earn us heaven that we are eager to make in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your name. In Yehoshua's mighty name, we are prayed. Please make sure you share this message. Subscribe to our channel. Please like our videos. Every All those points, they have different rewards. Okay? When you share, others will profit. And when you like, YouTube will recommend us to others. Then, when you press the notification button, the benefit comes directly to you because you will be no notified when we upload new videos. I don't need to share it to you before you get it. Please take that time out now to, to press it. And you can pass your comments. We all rub mine together to learn more. We cannot forsake the assembly of the saints. You are a saint, I'm a saint. That's the word of God. We are the temple of God, or the temple of the Most High God. He resides in all. The more we exchange, the more we profit even from our Creator. God bless you. Have a very wonderful day.